So I want to welcome you to the show today. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaga Diamond. We have a wonderful show for you today, a pastor, a wonderful, wonderful show. And I do so hope that you go ahead and tune in and don't forget to dare to be different. Here we go. We're getting ready to start this thing. And we're back. Thank you so much again. You know, getting closer to God, Yah, Yahweh, whatever you want to say. I mean, it, whatever, whatever you want to say, however you want to say it, it's still getting closer to the most high. And I have a pastor here who has a book and we're going to introduce him. Thank you so much for being on the show. Please tell everybody who you are and what's the name of your book? Hello. Um, the name of my book is Making Room for God. I am Pastor Sam Houston uh, at Changing Lives Community Ministries in Pleasant Hill in California, and it's glad, good to be here. It's amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Let's go back into, into a little bit of time because people love to hear those stories. How did you know you were going to write a book, and how did you know you were going to be a pastor? Well... Both ones is I don't I didn't know, didn't know until actually I did it. Um, the thing about it is I didn't know I was going to be a pastor, something I didn't want to necessarily be. Um, I was comfortable being in the back row, the back pew, or just helping people, and not necessarily being in front. But God um, kind of led me in a, a different direction than once some of the ministries that I was in, he just talked to me about really being ground grassroots and helping people um, like one person at a time, kind of getting out the walls of traditional, trying to bring people in ministry. So I, I actually ended up starting uh, a ministry and the book came along kind of uh, my wife at, actually wrote a book. And of course, before then, I would never probably thought about re writing a book, but I was doing a Sunday, I was reading some books uh, and God gave me this thing. And it's like, you know, people should know this. And my wife said, why don't you write a book? And I was like, I am not capable of writing a book. So she just said, um, just write little things down. Uh, I just wrote little things down at a time and it took over a period of maybe three years for me to actually do it. So, mm. you know, that's that's kind of amazing what you said. You said you wrote little pieces down. So, w describe the little pieces that you wrote because a lot of people don't understand that they too can write a book, even though you feel kind of incompetent because I do too. Mm -hmm. It's it's not that. It's just maybe maybe they're approaching it wrong. Tell me about your journey. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of started because um, I, I read a book um, by Mike, Dr. Dr. Michael Gresham. It was called The Second Brain, and it was a fascinating book. It just tells you how much your your body, your stomach in it in it itself sends signals independently of your own mind, and it fascinated me because I'm necessarily overweight. But how many things dictated actions that necessarily that I necessarily didn't create in my own mind. And it really reminded me about the Bible and the talking about the flesh and stuff like that. And it sent me down a really curious path to kind of understanding the, the impulses that tries to control me and tries to dictate actions that's outside the life that I'm trying to live for Christ. Mm -hmm. So I went to try to understand that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So your journey mm -hmm. took you to writing a little bit of the time. Yes. Not just like paragraphs or anything like, but just jotting down things that may have come to your mind. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, I, read, I read books. I, I read some other books. Um, the happiness hypothesis, desire, uh, desiring God. So as as I was writing little things and as I was trying to formulate this this word that God had given me, I was trying to create something. And I just think writing down things at little things at a time that God gave me, I was able to 
trying to help coalesce ideas and understand myself better mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, um, making it not so overwhelming to try to put sit instructions together to make it make sense because then I probably would have been outside my depth. Mm. You know, a lot of people feel like they can't write a book. And I mean, you know, thinking about your thinking about your journey and, and, and you know, making room for God and the <clears throat> book that you just wrote, how does that now affect your life? Did you find that you began to make even more room for God since you've written that book? Yeah. Um, one of the things is, that, you know, if you have a revelation of, of God, if you get true understanding, uh, it changes you because you're more aware. The Bible tells us that we need to be sober and aware. Sober just be, being in a position to know and being aware of your surroundings. And to know yourself is actually to have more control, to be able to be discipled, to be able to discipline yourself when you understand an action that comes to you that may not be from you. That may be your stomach saying that you want sweets or your stomach saying, I desire this. And if you understand the difference between your voice and then the voice that your body creates, you actually have more ability to be in control. And then it also comes to, if you can distinguish those two voices, you might be able to to distinguish the voice that God, that comes from God when he talks to you. Mm. So that's one of the major premises of making room for God, because you're making room for God in your own head by knowing the difference between your voice and the voice that your body creates. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that that's not really, I mean, you know, we're talking about making room for God, but making room for God, according to what you're telling me, is like, there are three voices here. There's your voice, your second brain, which is your stomach area, the stomach, right? And then there's Mm -hmm. the voice of the most high of God. And you have to be able to differentiate between this, between the three. How have you, have you been able to differentiate between the three? I mean, is it simple? Is it hard? Or is it something you're still trying to master? Still trying to master, but it becomes easier. One of the things that I, I, that helps me, help me on this journey, I go, I go shopping uh, for different things, food. And I understand the things that I tell myself, I'm not going to buy sweets. But when I get to the store, guess what happens is my, my body or my, my there's an impulse to look for sweets, to walk by sweets. And for some reason, there's a, there's a, there's a stronger impulse. Even when I said before I got to the store, I didn't want to buy sweets. So that's what I'm saying is that sometimes our impulses are the the, the natural person, the, the, the physical person. And the Bible tells us that we have to fight the flesh. And that's what the flesh is. If you understand what the Bible tells us, now they scientifically got a word for it where mm. there's a book that tells you that impulses come from within you that's not you. It's just your stomach, your primordial your primordial brain thinking for you that's just trying to stay alive I so that's yeah terrible. so ice cream. <laughs> yeah so if you understand that you 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 in a position to to do a little bit bit of more of uh, kind of monitor mm-hmm. and discipline yourself because you know ultimately where it comes from Mm-hmm. And so does that make it easier for you now to get closer to God, to have more room for God, since you understand now where all of the interruptions are coming from? Yes and no. Oh, OK. To be real, we, we're all humans and we all have wants and desires and stuff like that. So everything is. Every decision is is independent based on how you feel, based on the circumstances around you, it may become easier at one point, but it may be harder at other points because things may not be going right in your life and you'll depend more on your feelings than on who you want to be. 
That's where it happens with, with us. There's a very variable factor that work that is at a, at work at various times in our lives. Some goal leads us to be more successful, but if we have a negative environment, there's less likely that you will be successful because you'll more likely to lean on the physical feeling part to make yourself feel better instead of standing in your spiritual, standing with integrity and standing in who you are and what you said you're going to be. Mm. So Making Room for God, your book, describes, what What can we say it describes? Does it help people to understand the difference between their their brain and their stomach and then the voice of the most high of God? Or does it, does it uh, document your journey? So basically what the book does is tries to get you to, to notice the, the actions in your life that may uh, reflect the, an emptiness or a, 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 a place where you've created to make full. Um, a lot of times things happen to us in our lives that makes us angry. We, we were abused, but we fill that up with something to protect ourselves, uh, a mental, a mental uh, kind of shield um, because we don't want to feel victimized. But what we do with that is we use that to take care of us instead of the word of God, letting things go because we can't let it go because we'll feel vulnerable mm -hmm. and we won't let God into that part of our lives because we're using sarcasm. We're, mm -hmm. we're using something else. We're using a drug. We're, we're using codependent relationships. And when we recognize those things, we can actually move those things out of our lives and allow God into it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying making room for God. Wow. wow. That truly is revolutionary. I'm going to say that that's because, you know, I, I know, I knew about the second brain because, you know, I mean, ice cream is all I got to say, because I can say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to have ice cream. Guess what I have in my freezer? Well, I mean, it's not like it's, 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 it's coconut ice cream basically. So I, I've made a step away from the traditional, but it's not working anyway. But I understand where you're coming from because you can make up your mind not to do something. And all of a sudden, like you said, when you're walking by that aisle, it's like, yo, you gotta get some ice cream. You, you just can't mm -hmm. skip this aisle. You gotta get cheese. You gotta get, you gotta get all the things that you know that you shouldn't be having so much of. And so, yeah, definitely, definitely. I can, I can concur that this is, it's an issue, but with getting this book, with understanding the complexities of the situation, as well as the, the, um, the fight to stay on track. This is going to be amazing. This is, I mean, I love what you've done. Thank you so much for doing this. You know, um, wow. Where can people get the book? I mean, I know down below we have it on Amazon uh, and I've already put it up uh, as a, as a picture so people can see it. Um, but people, sometimes they want to contact you directly um, or sometimes, you know, they want to buy the book. Um, where can people find you so that then maybe they can, you know, ask, ask some questions. Well, um, they can find me, um, I guess, Facebook um, through uh, Changing Lives Community Ministries, um, through the, the website, of course, that's uh, the church that I, I pastor. Um, and right now, that's it. Uh, I wasn't doing this for no, no, no big, big gain or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a, a move of God. So right now, I self- uh, I published it through um, Amazon right now, so that's primarily where where it is. Um, unless God moves me to where you know uh, it should be on other platforms, but for right now, those are it. Right. You know, God can make miraculous things out of very small effort uh, because you were faithful and you went ahead and you did it even though you didn't feel like as if that was something you, you know, you could do, you did it anyway. And to me, that means a lot. And, uh, and understanding the plight is, is, it's just, I mean, a lot of people didn't know this. 
and now they do. And when they get the book, they'll know it even further. I want to thank you, Pastor, for being on the show. And uh, definitely, you guys, go ahead. And uh, well, we're going to go ahead and put that down as a banner. What was the name of the... Uh, it's on Facebook, right? Facebook? Yes, the name Changing, of the church. Lives, Changing, Changing Lives Communities Ministries. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, this is what it is. You know, um, people need to to be able to reach you. And I think through the ministry, it's really good because this is this is your this is your calling, even though you ran from it. <laughs> this is your calling. <laughs> so thank you so much, Pastor, for being on the show. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for for making room for God. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for tuning in to Dream Chasers Radio. And again, don't forget that you can reach Pastor at Changing Lives Community Ministry on Facebook, as well as you can go ahead and get the book on Amazon, Making Room for God, the paperback. And it's in large print by Samuel Houston, Jr. Yay. And I want to thank you guys again so much for tuning in. It's been such a pleasure. And uh, don't forget, you're not crazy. When you're hearing your stomach talk to you, it really is true. All right. Until next time, guys. All right.